In just 10 days, this nuclear power plant in southern Iran could receive its first shipment of domestically produced nuclear fuel in at least five years. Tehran says it resumed uranium enrichment after Washington abandoned the Iran nuclear deal last year. From the 27th of June, we will bypass the 300 kilogram limit for enrichment. After that, we will also be able to increase the rates of low uranium enrichment. That would put Iran in violation of the 2015 nuclear deal within 10 days. EU countries have spent more than a year trying to salvage the agreement. They've developed an alternative payment system to help European companies avoid US sanctions on Tehran. Yet the oil company Total, container shipping giant Maersk, automaker Peugeot and many other firms have cut business ties with Iran over the US sanctions. And Brussels is nowhere near getting the US to recommit to the nuclear agreement. Information is being exchanged with the US and the UK. We have different views on how to deal with the nuclear agreement with Iran. Nothing has changed. There are other issues which worry me more, such as punitive customs duties, which have already been imposed or which have been announced. That is not the right way for partners to deal with each other. Recent attacks on vessels sailing through the Strait of Hormuz and the Gulf of Oman have further fueled tensions. Washington says this video proves Tehran's involvement in the attacks, a charge Iranian officials deny. It's unmistakable what happened here. These were attacks by the Islamic Republic of Iran. This explanation contradicts accounts from the crew of one of the ships that was attacked on Thursday. The crew told us something came flying at the ship and exploded. Then they found a hole in the ship. Yet Washington says it's ready to strike back against Iranian aggression. That's setting off alarm bells at the EU. Do you think that someone reasonable can think that we can solve the conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran with weapons? It would be a disaster. It would be fatal for this region. Analysts say Iran's resumed nuclear enrichment to pressure Brussels into helping it economically. But the EU's support for the nuclear deal depends on Iran abiding by it. And if the uranium enrichment continues, Tehran could end up further alienated and vulnerable. Rubin Nasser, TRT World. Well, let's get more on this now with Hushang Amir Ahmadi, who joins me now from Princeton, New Jersey. He's president and founder of the American Iranian Council. Welcome back to Money Talks, Hushang. Now, how worried should the world be by Iran's announcement that it soon will break the limit for enriched uranium? Not much, for one thing. Uh, it, they, even if they pass 300 kilogram, the question is how much of that addition is kept in a stock. Second, Iran will have a long way, many times more, to get to where it used to be back in, let's say, uh, 2016, 15, for example, you know, 12,000 kilogram of enriched uranium, and including some at 20%. Uh, uh, so I don't think that the world has to be worried about this. And this is another uh, way of, uh, unfortunately, mismanaging this nuclear deal. Iran is way too late in making this kind of announcements. Iran should have left the JCPOA almost a year and a half ago when Mr. Trump left. I don't know why they stayed so long, and now they are making announcements that are completely irrelevant and just makes the world angry at them. There is nothing they can gain from it. Mm. This is, they are doing this in a way of a sort of propagation of, of a particular warning or threat, which nobody is going to listen. And uh, again, uh, Iran is really mismanaging uh, the nuclear issue again, and its operations in the Persian Gulf, okay. I think, on the Sea of Oman. Yes. They should really be careful. Now, do you think that perhaps Tehran has made this announcement to put pressures on the remaining European signatories to the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, to get them to perhaps try and salvage the agreement somehow? This, this agreement is dead. It has been dead since Mr. Trump left the JCPOA. This JCPOA was a deal between the United States and Iran, 
period. The other parties were just there as decorations. God knows, everybody does, and Europe has never been in the last 70 some years since World War II to take on any issue internationally independent of the United States. Iran must have understood, understood this long ago. Unfortunately, Tehran missed the opportunity, you know, wasted time going after Europe for salvaging the, the deal. You know, they thought that, you know, Russia would be there and, and China would be there. None of them, honestly, will be able to help Iran while the U.S. is absent in this deal. So the deal is finished. The deal is finished with all practical purposes. I think they should do a renegotiation, okay? And I believe uh, in Trump, Iran can find an opportunity. Unfortunately, they made this opportunity into a threat, and that was another mismanagement of the U.S.-Iran relations over the last two years. I think Iran really needs to go back uh, on the table. Uh, and put everything on the table. Mr. Trump wants a comprehensive deal toward normalization of relations, and I don't see why Iran shouldn't do it. Now, we know Iran's economy is in a very bad way. The, the currency is plunging, inflation is on the rise, uh, everyday goods, the prices of everyday goods are skyrocketing. How badly does Iran need to come to the table? Well, Quite a bit. For one thing, really, the United States does not need to wage a war against Iran. If, and if it happens, it would be purely accidental. I know the United States has no plan to invade, to attack Iran, in, at least not in the near future. Mr. Trump will never take a military action in the next year because that will not help his election, will not help anything. Yeah, I mean, close to the election, I could see if it gets enough pretext, it may invade. But not the invade, the attack. But I tell you one thing. I think Iran should not, should not take the kind of actions or talk the way it is as uh, the time goes by. They are really inviting violence against them. In fact, I have to tell you, unfortunately, Mr. Khamenei and his people really want a war. They seem to me that one of them told me that either we sit and die or we stand and die. So oh. Iran may decide to stand and, and die. That is to say, you know, die like a martyrs and a fight imperialism, that kind of uh, stuff, rather yes. than just sit around and die by economic sanctions, through the economic sanctions. Mm. Well, okay. if I was Iran, if I had a mm. choice to make, okay. I would have rather die economically rather than through a war. Okay. Hushang Amir Ahmadi, we will have to leave it there, but thank you for your analysis as always.